Hi again, and uh, here I am back in my studio going to do another video. Um, today I'm going to be working in gouache. I'm using SAA artist quality gouache for this. Um, mainly A because I like them and B because that's what happens to be in my palette at the moment. I'm using a stay wet palette it looks a funny color inside because i've followed lots of people's advice and i put a j cloth to hold the water and um on top of that is just baking parchment so so far it looks to be all right it's been in there for this is the third night and it's perfectly usable it's all nice and soft and soggy um so there we go i'm using a variety of brushes mainly system three brushes uh from dale rowney um i've got some other ones as well uh, but that's what i'm doing and the picture i'm going to be painting is based on this which is a very old photograph about 20 no 10 12 years old um of Irifel, the mountain range over there, taken from Porthoscadian Cove. This is one of our favourite places. We used to go camping there all summer when we were teaching. It was lovely. We'd be marking in our caravan all night and playing around on the beach all day. Uh, great. That, I don't know if you can see him, but that by there is our lovely old Labrador ginger who died a few years ago and that's my wife but I won't put her in I might put a figure but basically um, what I want to do is try and get the layers the regression going back so looking at the photograph that is a very big mountain range it looks quite small and it looks quite pale, pale, but it's not. I've been right up there and it's very, very high. Here is the next headland. And there's odd little farms and stuff on there. I'll put some of them on, bits of tree. And this is the far side of Port Scadding Cove. This is the near side. And that's the beach. Um, it's a lovely place. Very, very quiet. Um, when we used to get there at the beginning of the holiday, Ginger, our lab, would run off ahead of us, run all the way down the beach, and by the time we got there, he'd be right out there, a little dot. He used to love the sea there. Right, okay, I shall put that out of the way and get on. I've done a drawing, um, basically because I wanted to get the shape of the headland more or less in it's got a very distinctive shape your rifle it's got this little tusk at the end and then it goes up and woggles um i wanted to get the shape recognizable if not completely right uh it won't show any of that drawing by the time i've stuck several layers of um, acrylic on it for the headland, I've just put two parallel lines in. There's nothing on it. I'll put them in with a little brush when it's dry. So, first off, I'm going to start in with this three-quarter inch brush. Um, get my water down here. Oh, colours, as I say, they're, um, they're all SAA. I've got Titanium White, down there's Payne's Grey, Cadmium Yellow, Raw Sienna, Burnt Sienna, Cobalt Blue, Oxide of Chromium, um, Mars Brown, Alizarin Crimson, and a tiny, tiny dash down there of uh, Cadmium Red, which I'll use very little of, if any. But I do like to have, like, Constable, my little red soldier in there somewhere. 
So, without further ado, I'm doing this on £140 watercolour paper and I'm treating it like watercolour to start with. The sky I will put in almost like a watercolour sky, I'll wet the paper. There's quite a lot going on in the, um, in the foreground so I don't want too much in the sky, in the picture. There's loads happening in the sky, but I'll take most of that out. Just because you're working from a photograph doesn't mean you have to copy it. Okay, cobalt blue. Quite a damp brush. And I'll put my sky in. Taking it over the mountains. And as in watercolour, I'll just pull out a little bit of cloud. A little bit of white to help it out. Build it up. A little bit of sky, a little bit of clouds here and there. I say just this is on the north coast of the Flynn Peninsula in North Wales. And if I did a sky without any clouds, it <laughs> No one would believe it anyway, it's always, there's always an inshore wind breeze, sometimes breeze, sometimes a howling gale. So there's always clouds building up over these headlands. In fact, in the picture, I'm not going to put it in here, but in the picture there's, you can barely see the mountain in places because of the clouds over it, but that'll do. That's my sky. I might soften that top cloud a little bit. Right, that'll do. Anything else is fiddling. Now the next thing is I'm going to move to this little half inch. Uh, it's quite a long bristled brush and for that I'm going to use that to put in the, um, the headland. Again I'm going to use some of the colours that are already on here. I did another seascape couple of nights ago using these colours so a lot of the stuff that's mixed up will come in handy for this as well so a bit more blue into that to knock it back a bit further I 
and this is still very watery very thin now not watery enough This is darker than it's going to end up being because I want to get the shape in and then I'll add lights to it. To send it further back. Right, that's the furthest away bit done. There's my next one. And this one is a very hard cliffy sort of edge there and then it goes up. So this is an underpainting, I'll be putting lots of different colours on top of this. So we've got that bit. Now, behind that, there's a jaggedy bit. That's a technical archaeological term, a jaggedy bit. Jaggedy bit. There's that, and then there's the big clumpy bit. Mix some green into this because it's very tree-fied. Oh, it's a bit too bright. back to my purpley grey colour Yes. 
so that's that and now I'm going to use the raw sienna some white touch of the yellow touch of the green and I mix it onto this manky stuff which will tie everything together starts to go up in the air a bit as it goes in front of the big mountainy bit so there we go that's the middle distance in and I'm going to put some more detail well not detail I'm going to hint at some more detail in those furthest clippy bits and I'm looking for a brush there yeah, I'll use this one it's <clears throat> quite an old don't know who it's by, it's that old that the maker's mark has rubbed off. So, the light is coming from this side, but it's low down and it's sort of raking across. So, it must be quite early in the morning now. I know it's quite early in the morning because the light's coming from over here which is the east side sitting out on top of this cove looking out that way over there you get the most magnificent wonderful gorgeous beautiful sunsets that I've ever seen they're absolutely wonderful not every night usually <clears throat> on the night you don't take your camera with you so I'm just scumbling in some odd bits of light just marge I don't want too much contrast on there because it's a long way away and all I'm doing is mixing some lighter bits into the grey pool
tapping things in there, a little bit of digital art. I'm not chunnering as much as I usually do because my belly's playing up a little bit tonight. I've got a poorly tum. few rather lighter bits Lighten that whole bit there because there's too much contrast. Right, that's the far headland, more or less sorted. Put this tree bit in. Well, it's not a tree bit. I think it's monad nevin, but I'm not sure. We've got that in. Yeah, I don't want too much detail, that's not bad. Now I'm going to put this is all farms, farmland. Um, it's mainly down to sheep farming, but there are the occasional 
Um, field of crops, I'm not sure what they grow. Not much because the soil's so thin. But I think a lot of it goes down for silage first. There's a lot of cows there as well. There's not as many cows as there used to be during the time we were going there. The bottom dropped out of the um, the milk market because ridiculously it became cheaper to get milk from middle european countries than it was well the supermarkets could buy it cheaper from middle european countries than they could to cover the costs of the farmers in um in north wales it was really tragic Lots of farms went completely bust and Gary the farmer, whose farm we used to stay on, he had to flog all his milk cattle and he had to restock in beef. But really if it wasn't for the tourist industry he'd be struggling even more than he does. But the only way that there's a couple of farms close to Porthos Scout in here where they've gone the other way and they've invested in almost factory farming of cows and they've got herds of thousands and these huge great revolving milk impalas. But farms like Gary's where they had, yeah, I suppose they only have a couple of dozen, maybe 50 at the very most, best times. It used to be lovely when we go in there, when my nephews were young and they used to go out camp there and they'd go out with Gary on the farm help with the milking. On holiday these lads who would never ever ever get up early to go to school would be up at five o'clock running across the campsite to go and do the milking. I'm putting in sort of beachy bits. There's lots of little coves and inlets along there. Right, that's got that bit. Coming up here. We've actually got something that's quite rare on the flynn, and that's trees. 
very very windy and uh, most of the trees that grow there you find the hawthorns things like that that just bend with the wind so I'm going to lighten that even more with my little pen my little brush so that the trees will stand out against it But I need it a little bit bluer. This is the blessing and the curse of acrylics. They dry so quickly that A, you can paint over them, but it's difficult to blend. Right, that's a bit lighter. A bit more white. Just putting some texture into that. It is actually quite a big mountain. I thought it all looked like a clump of trees. Now, talking about a clump of trees, here comes my clump of trees. Blue, green, Tiny touch of Payne's Grey. More green. Right. more yellow into that light green because there's more sunshiny bits over here over there somewhere there's a bleached out stubble field I'm not trying to be accurate, I'm just trying to break it up so that it doesn't look like a parallel line.
Right, now, next thing is I'm going to put in some of the sea across there and to do that I'm going to use this little brush again that I used for that bit. Now, I'm going to, have to stop after this and recharge some of the colours, not because they're dead, but because I've used them. White. Cobalt blue, because I've used cobalt blue in the sky. And now, Just trying to get the impression of some sun on that water. Right, I'm going to leave that partly because it's a good place to stop, but mainly because I've used all the blue on my palette and I'm going to recharge the palette. And, like an idiot, I've left all my paints in the drawer. I thought I'd have enough to carry on. So, I will pause there and I'll see you in a little minute. Right, I'm back. I've sorted out my palette. I've put on a big chunk of blue. And now, I've also got the rest of the paints out of the drawer. And they're sat, sat sitting there within reach of me. So now, I'm going to get my bigger brush. 
dry it out bit of my blue mix it into my C colours I'm adding white and now I'm going to it's slightly different colour now because I put more blue and more white into it but I'm going to fade that back into there Sometimes you hear people say on instruction videos make sure you mix up huge quantities of the colour that you're using because you'll never ever ever be able to mix it up again exactly the same. Well, chances are you can, but if you don't it doesn't really matter especially in acrylics because you just go over it there we go that looks a bit chilly doesn't it and so it should it's the Irish Sea and next Stop is the North Atlantic so it's a bit chilly um, but it's mine I love it just putting in little bits of tiny bits of surf across there and I'm going to put some little white horses now I'm switching to bristle brushes because I'm going to do these rocky bits I want a bit more texture in those there's some absolutely beautiful rock structures and the colours in them are amazing. Um, you can't do them justice but there's purples, reds, yellows, ochres, all sorts of colours in there. Um, so I'm going to just put in a mishmash. I want some quite strong rocky bit coming down there change direction on that one because oh it's an earthquake no it's me bashing the camera um yeah I realized I was painting a lot of stuff on the um on the masking tape and that's a bit of a waste of time because it's all going to get ripped off so put this next bit
I just having a bit of think as I'm doing it. It's very painful this thinking business, isn't it? I should do it anywhere near as much as I do. I'm simplifying these, there's about four different layers of rocks, but I'm going down to two and a bit. Um when you're there you don't count them you just think oh there's some rocky bits over there and if you get too precise working from photographs it's tends to kill the integrity of the painting as a painting I think um, for me anyway each to their own but I like go on a journey starting from the painting still needs to be recognizable as where it is in this case but I still don't want it I've already got the photograph what do I want to com copy it for you know if I want to copy it uh, just stick it in the computer and print out several copies. So no, I think I would rather make it something different. By putting all these purpley colours here, it should be making that fall much further into into the distance. I'm doubling in some lights. Trying to give the impression of this low light hitting this, these rocks and fragmenting it. dark on that side Use a small brush again and get some dark colour mixed up. Payne's grey, raw sienna, blue, a bit more Payne's grey, touch of crimson just to warm it all up, and then I'm going to start in shadowy bit try to get a little bit of definition
So I'm not drawing as such, I'm just trying to put some rougher sort of texture into these rocky bits. Doing it again, very careful painting on the masking tape. Lighter colours. orangey bits because there's lots of orangey coloured seaweed all over these rocks. I'd still put plobs of bright colour in just to bring it forward, but at least I've got a good excuse so to do. Right, I'll have to do some more to those bits later on, but I want to put this bit in here which will knock everything else back hopefully mm. now then now then now then start it with a yellow base because I want it to come towards us. Then some raw sienna, some white, now
Now that gives me an idea of what the high points are going to look like there. Now I'm going to put in the front bits of C. The cobalt. Titanium whitey. Lots of. And... bit more water because we're going to be fairly careful now. I've left some little bits of white paper showing through there on purpose. Right, now then. Smaller bristly brush. That one will do. And lots of white to start with. Right, I'm having a little think now. Um, it's getting to a stage where I'm going to bugger it if I'm not careful. I wanted to put that little inlet there because it's... Wait, I think I'll make the tide a little bit further in than it is. Drown my dear little wifey. Good idea. clean and dry your brushes in between different bits of paper yeah that's better
Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, I've gone over the top of my rocks. Will I have to start again? No, I won't. Bit more of that light colour going through there. Keep it flat. Right, that's a bit better. Now, some more of that colour through here. And I'll put some rocky bits on the shore. Where's my... <clears throat> there it is. My rock painting thing. Oh! it out a bit I'll get some dark colours onto this brush. I'm bashing the end of it. I don't know if you can see that being bashed. in here as well, bigger ones. Now Getting me white out. Ah. Mm. 
I'm doing a shortcut and it hasn't worked. Right. Picked up the wrong tub of white. And this one is Krilla heavy duty stuff. But I didn't look at the label. So I've got some very, very, very thick white paint here. which will make some beautiful texture but it's not what I was looking for I need to put lots of water in it I've forgotten what I want to do now. Oh yeah, put some smooth in here. I'll do, I will put a little bit of beach just along there. See, I'm making it up as I go along now. The uh, photo is a thing of the past. Just put a little tiny triangular bit of beach down there. A little bit of the shadow of that. And with me thick white. Some dotty little bits of turf, of turf. safe. Right now, leave that for a bit. Where's me other? There it is. This is a brush which is donkey's years old and I keep it for rough stuff. Foliage, rocky bits, things like that. Now, this thick paint should come into its own now.
Right, now then. Now then, now then. Into that, a little shade must fall. I'll get my dark browns and my paints grey. I want to get fairly high contrast here. Because this is the closest bit and the sunniest bit. I'll leave that to dry and then I shall go back in and paint the um, paint the shadows as a wash now there's where I took out the top of my rocks before so isn't it wonderful what a the power of the artist took nature thousands and thousands of years to make these crocky bits, but I could do it in seconds. Put a bigger bit. with my stiff white put some dancy bits of sea I'll put that into a dark bit afterwards
put some lighter colour onto that. Some little darker bits where you've got little wavelets twiddling about. Uh, across there, I need. back in the beachy bit That's nearly dry now, so I can get a pointy brush. That one will do it. Basically blue, black, bit of purple and some of the browns. I just want to make a really dark colour.
need to make a bit of purple into that. Because the purple will sing against the yellow. not over happy with this foreground Right, I'm going to leave it for a few minutes and have a little think. Right, okay, I've had a little think, I've had a look at it, and I think what's missing is a little bit of rigor work here and there. I'll put that out of my head for now, uh, because I don't want to have to start again with it, but I can easily go over it. Um, that line is too indistinct, there's actually lots of buildings and stuff there. So I'm going to get a neutral sort of brownie grey colour. And I'm just going to put in some dots and dashes. just indicate something there, bits of texture. There's also a little house which I'm not going to draw but I'm going to give a little indication of something there. So that's that, and some darker greeny bits, just along some of that headland, too green. This oxide of chromium is a very good mixing green, but it's a bit viridiany when you use it on its own. It tends to take over. And while I put some little dark bits, I'm going to put in some little light bits. that. 
I don't know any detail. Just bits where I thought I should have put something when I was looking at it. Just a few minutes work. Just to faff about with stuff. It's a big empty blobby bit there so I think I'll put some white horses. I knew there was another bit that was annoying me. bit of dark neutral behind it just to make it stand out a bit in fact I'm going to add a bit of green to that because it's probably a grassy bit the grassy no A little bit of dark. Right, now. That bit's alright, that bit's alright. A little bit of... Lace. The edge. Now it's this bit, which I am not happy with at all. So going to mix a slightly less intense colour for the lights.
darky colour. Yeah, we're getting somewhere now. And a little bit down there. Come on, shiny bit, where are you? Yeah, that'll do. A little bit more dark in there and it's done. Right, there. Now, where's my little rigger? And... Ooh. There's a white bit there that shouldn't be there. Right, okay, now what I was going to do before is my little red soldier just to put things in perspective about a third of the way in
use this one. So there, that puts things a little bit into perspective, I think. A um, couple of tiny little figures. And that's what I meant to do hours ago. Just put some tiny bits of detail into there. There, I'm going to leave it because I'm fiddling. Okay. That one will do. I'll just take the paint the tape off and then we'll have a proper look at it. Okay, hope you enjoyed that one. Thanks for watching.